Hello and welcome to another Red Nine Demo. Um, this again revolves around the build of uh, May 2022. There's been an awful lot in this build, so we're gradually doing the demos for it. This particular one, we're going to go through a new feature that's gone into the Protobind and in all of the systems to deal with HIK and management of HIK. Now, I, I know it doesn't seem relevant to a lot of people, but if you're doing anything with mocap or um, particularly if you've got something like an XN suit where you've got data coming out and you want to get that data onto a, onto a rig really quickly, all of that is now catered for. So this is a sequence which is actually um, on the XN's website. This is their one of their demo pieces, a Gangnam style piece. Um, and the issue is that the data itself has no HIK on it. So it's just a skeleton. So if we get rid of this and we just look at what the actual raw data is, get rid of that. And we drag that data over there. What we've got is a standard output from something like um, Xsense. Now, this isn't specific to Xsense, so please don't think it is. This is I'm just using that as an example. So at frame zero, we have a T pose, and then we have the piece of motion data going across there. There is no HRK on it. So in terms of doing a remapper and getting data over to the rig, our systems know nothing about this. There's no information about it at all. So what we need to do is we need to put HRK onto this. We need to give it a definition. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the rig manager. Now the rig manager had a huge set of tools updated in the previous build, which is this stuff down here about skeleton management and managing poses, etc. <clears throat> and what we added in was the ability to save and load HIK definitions, sorry, HID, HIK definitions on the fly. Now Maya can do that. It can save it, but it saves an XML, it saves an XML file, which is just the connection data itself. It doesn't save anything to do with the TPOs, which is kind of a misjoin because HRK definition is the TPOs and it's the connections. It's both together and there's nothing there to save it. So we decided that our, our save pose systems should handle TPOs and it should handle HRK. Now I've got a file saved out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this one, HRK characterize file. Now, if you see anything in this where it says, for example, that B pose comma attribute comma load, that's loading it from an attribute these are all loading it from attribute. If it says file, it's expecting an input file. Okay, same with these. So I'm going to go HRK characterization built from TPOs. Now I already have this saved off. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into X drive. This comes with pro now. We go into the pro pack. We're going to go into resources and templates and there's HRK uh, template for Xsense. And I'm going to go load and we're going to call it test. That's just the name of the HRK now. Now this is really important. Would you like to load the internal T-Pose transform data? If yes, this conforms the skeleton's current pose to that of the data inside the T-Pose. So remember, the, the, the files we save out, the T-Pose file has the HRK plugs, just like the HRK save template does, but it also contains the T-Pose. In this case, this T-Pose didn't come from this skeleton. So if I load it, all the transforms of the skeleton would be different. The proportions would be different, and that wouldn't be any good for any, you know, for, for loading data. So I'm going to say no, just load the plugs. And what you'll see is HRK spins up, and that's our HRK definition. And all I've got to do to lock it is to put them in TPOs and go lock. Now that's the mechanism that we're that we're discussing here about how to deal with this this data. If I were to save this file back out, so I go skeleton post save, this would include this definition, and it would also include this T-pose, this, so this position. And that's important. So like I say, it's nothing to do with Xsense. It's just the process we're doing is, is a revolving around Xsense because this is a, a feature requested by our client. But it, it's valid for anything. So that's one thing. It allows us to get HIK really quickly onto a skeleton. Um, instantly, this thing is showing up as an issue because in this test file from Xsense, you have the hips and you have the reference point in exactly the same place, and HIK doesn't like that. Um, and that's that will come up in a minute actually when we start loading stuff. There's a flag that deals with with ignoring these issues. But for the time being, let's do that. Right. So we've now got a, a template. We've now got an ex, uh, sorry a, a T post template that we can use to force HRK data onto a skeleton. Now anyone that's been using Pro for a while will say, well, hang on, we've already had that. We've it's, we can do that within the asset browser. We can select a whole load of this and we can go update and save which is the current process of doing it. What that does is you load a, a piece of data like this where you've got a valid HIK definition and when you go update and save, it basically updates the animation onto that skeleton, resaves the FBX, so it's processing the FBX files. Uh, you can now do that with this one. 
So you don't actually have to have that loaded. You can just go, right, load the data. And this is doing, so that's the Xsense file that we just loaded up from here. That's this one here. When we loaded this Xsense data up, that's the file. But these other values are really important. Uh, from pose, from FBX, uh, character name is obviously the name of the HIK node that we create. Uh, call him uh, Xsense. Okay, oops, call it Xsense. Um, and then these two. So post frame zero and um, and the force lock. A post frame zero basically says, let's just get rid of those two. Basically says that the incoming FBX files, the files that we're about to process, actually have a T pose internally at frame zero. This one does. Frame zero, that's the T pose. And a lot of systems, when you have put mocap data, will put the T pose at a given frame. So rather than using the the, the T pose from the from this Xsense file, remember if we loaded it, the character would change proportions. We want to extract it from the actual data itself. Um, or we can load it from the pose, like I say, if it was from the skeleton. Now, all of this is very good at putting data onto skeletons, but the purpose of the new update is to avoid having to do that. So that's where this comes in. We've got the FBX file. Again, has no definition on it. We've got the red nine binder, obviously the, the standard binder, the way we get data onto it. And we've also got this new option down here, HIK connect, load HIK. So what's that gonna do? That is gonna load in the FBX file of this Gangnam style piece of animation. It knows there's no HIK definition on it. We've just known that at frame zero, we have a T pose, a character is standing in stance. So I'm gonna take um, the T pose from the FBX file at frame zero. And this force lock basically says, lock me. So in the code base for a lot of the HIK stuff, if it detects as an issue, it won't let you lock it. So this basically says, look, I know it's fine. Just lock it, get on with it. Um, and that specifically was to avoid this issue where you've got hip, hips and reference in the same place or anything that we kind of know there's an issue, but we're just avo avoiding it. So let's just process this file. Let's do this. So what this is doing is it's creating this HIK template. So it's creating this red nine HIK temp template, which is putting it on this Gangnam style um, data. So it's putting that onto this file, which had no HIK. It's loading up, putting HIK, and then the binder kicks in and connects the two plugs together. So in one go, we've gone from a skeleton with nothing on it that's just raw mocap directly to the rig. So that's quite a big update because like I say, previously this was a two-stage process. Previously you'd have to force HIK into the skeletons, then you'd process the FBXs. So you'd be, sorry, so you'd be processing the FBXs, saving them with a HIK definition, and then you'd be passing them into this process. And the, the request was, can we not do it in one go? Um, but like I say, what it does mean is that you can have your own HIK um, poses for specific skeletons. You can make sure that they get loaded and it's a really, really quick way of in one go taking data with nothing on and putting it onto the rigs. If I set the bake on this, in fact, we do the whole thing. Let's just click that and we'll do it again. Go. So in one shot, we've got an FBX with nothing on it. We're modifying it, putting HIK data on it. We're two, connecting that to this driver skeleton of our binder file, taking the data in, baking the data off and leaving us with a clean rig. Uh, not quite sure why it's paused there. What are we calculating, HIK? We're doing something. Oh, it's baking it off, look. Oh gosh, and there's a key off to frame, whatever it is, 930, that's why. It's taking the time to bake. So it's just loading that data up. I shouldn't have baked it. <laughs> it takes a little while to do the bakes. It's just a ball there. There we go. But again, you know, in order to get that data off, that is so, so quick. You know, we have done one process. This is all documented. Uh, this is one of the few things that we have actually got a proper PDF manual for. So if we open this manual up, that uh, wrong one, excuse me. If we open the manual up, uh, open manual, <laughs> figures. Uh, this goes on and on and on. There's an awful lot in it, but this will go through all the different mapping methods about how to do it, what this thing is doing, and there's some hints at the bottom about how to put the HIK data onto it, which is uh, down here somewhere. There we go, which goes through the new UI. So this UI that we showed first, what you'll notice is exactly the same UI as the other one. So if we do that, create HIK from pose, 
Look at this section, look at these, they're all exactly the same. In fact, they're the same widgets that get pushed over, so it's the set, exactly the same mapping methods. If we really want to, what we can also do is we can add in a custom HIK remap. So in this case, we just load the data. What we can do is we can say, well, actually, I want to maintain hand, uh, hand contacts or I want to change the remapper itself. So again, we can add HIK, we can change the remapping states and all of the properties within the remap. We can bind it to the rig and we can output to the rig and we can even save mail files, run on items and play blasts all in one go. Um, so it's a really big update in terms of uh, how we manage this data. Hopefully that makes sense. It's kind of a complicated thing. So, you know, if you're going to start using it, by all means, ping us. Uh, don't forget to, to like the YouTube channel, uh, check out the website, go and grab ProPack, go and test it, go play with it. Um, and hopefully you'll see what we've been up to um, and the value of it. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.